I played a part in asking him to commit the murder. That is why I'm in prison. I've had six years to feel those emotions. And there's things that I've kept so private. Gypsy Rose Blanchard, thank you for taking time out of your very busy day and press schedule to meet with E! Online. Uh, it's, it's very good to be with you, especially with the circumstances. I want to ask you, I know that you are just days off of this word freedom. Mm -hmm. What was the very first thing that you did when you did leave prison, Gypsy? Um, the very first thing I did was catch up on a good night's sleep because I was actually released at like 3.30 in the morning. Um, so I got a good night's sleep and after that, um, I just had a little get together with uh, me and my family and um, we just had a nice little gathering and it was good to see everyone. When you think of purchases, what was one of the first purchases that you made? Actually, I bought a, a pair of shoes because um, the shoes that I had had sent to me in like this little box um so i could leave the prison in um the boots that my stepmom did not fit and so those are the only shoes i had so we had to go shoe shopping for a second <laughs> i want to know and many others your bucket list um you were in prison for quite some time since you were 23 years old and you're now 32 years old what is on your bucket list to do now that you do have your freedom mm -hmm. Um, well, I do have a pretty extensive bucket list, um, everything ranging from the simple stuff um, to go shopping at the mall to traveling. Um, you know, I, I really want to see the world um, and I know that's going to take some time, but um, all of that stuff is definitely on my bucket list. Just living life and, and enjoying what, what the world has to offer. And so much has changed since you went to yes. prison. How do you yes. feel about this digital world? I mean, is it overwhelming for you? It is. I got to try an Oculus for the first time and I'm like, wow, I'm in Ready Player One right now. <laughs> it was it was amazing. It's cool. What is your reaction to how viral your story has gone? It's very interesting to, for me as a journalist to speak with you who's so bubbly and energetic. But of course, we know your story. What is your mm -hmm. reaction to how viral the story has gone? Um, you know, I, I just hope that with all this attention that it's it's worth something. I put out a message and I hope that people don't lose sight of that message in the, the thick of it all. Um, it's wonderful that I'm free, um, but now that I am free, that I'm kind of moving out of the hype of the, the freedom of it all. And um, I'm starting to really, really try and move into advocacy work. So I'm like, okay, guys, I'm happy that you're happy that I'm out. But now let's let's talk about things that I want to talk about in my advocacy work. So. Mm, because I'm sure you've seen the TikToks. What's your reaction to all of those? I mean, everyone's talking about you. Yeah, yeah, I've watched some of them. Um, my schedule has been pretty busy, so I haven't had a chance, like a chance to check my all of my DMs or anything. Um, but I actually did check one of my DMs and um, Elizabeth Smart had reached out to me. Wow. And um, I sent her a DM back and I just said, like, I told her how much of an inspiration she is to me. So um, that's been pretty amazing. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to not lose sight of, you know, the bigger picture of what I want to put out there. Um, and that's just just to be a voice for the voiceless, for people that have gone through abuse, abusive situations like I was in um, and give them a little bit of um, a guiding light yeah. um, and, and, and just express that. You know, the things that I did, the, the steps that I took to get out of my situation was the wrong example. Um, but I can't go back, I can't change it, so that all that I can do now is pick the pieces of my life back together and um, make myself a better person than I was when I went to prison um, and just try to do some good in the world. What did, what did Elizabeth say to you? Um, she told me that um, she had been wanting to reach out for a long time. Um, and she feels like my story can help a lot of people. If I ever need to talk to her, she would be more than happy to chat with me, which was very, very sweet. Mm, we've, we've interviewed her several times for E! Online, and she, uh, of course, does so much advocacy work and production work as well. So I'm sure you two will be working together very soon. How do you block out so much negativity? Does it bother you? Um, I have to remain grounded in knowing that, like, I know who I am as a person. So the people that don't know me, I have to just kind of remember, they don't know me. They they know what they've seen in tabloids and online. And a lot of tabloids could get a lot mixed 
like wrong and so incorrect information. So I think that if people had the correct information, perhaps they wouldn't hate me so much. You know, they wouldn't hate on me so much, but um, I can't change the haters and I'm okay with it. I'm me and I love me. I want you to go back to your, the struggle um, that you had with your role. You've talked about this struggle that you did have with your role playing in your mother's death. What do you wish you could change, if anything, Gypsy? I I would go back and change things if I could. Um, you know, I, I would definitely do things differently. I wish that I could. I, I unfortunately can't. You know, it's real life, so you can't, you don't have a time machine. Um, so all I can do now is just do things that in my life are positive. Um, take a bad situation, turn it into a positive the best way I can. What's the lowest moment that you've experienced with your mom that left you feeling the most desperate? Um, definitely um, when I tried to run away for the first time, um, and I talk about this in my docu-series, um, that was a really, really hard time for me because um, I'm sure that scene was in the act and in, in other documentaries also that she chained me to the bed and um, I was chained for two weeks. So, um, you know, that was one of the moments in my life that I'm kind of like, I can't keep living this way. This may be an odd question, but is there anything that you do now to honor her memory? I'm um, actually, you know, the, it's funny that you say that because... Um, she was cremated and her ashes are with her side of the family and i i always knew like she always said that she wanted to be buried with her with her mother and so i've reached out to family and asked them you know please make sure you honor her wishes in being buried with her mother hmm. i want to know what made you realize that your husband ryan was the perfect match for you <laughs> um you know i've been knowing ryan for three years we've been married for a year and a half and um he's just so genuine like he's down to earth he's genuine he's a big teddy bear um he's so lovable and he makes me laugh that's like the one thing that most attracted me to him is the fact that he could make me laugh in any situation it sounds like uh he's a lot different from other relationships you might have had what made him different than previous ones um his willingness to actually like love me for me um in previous relationships i think the the exes that i've had have maybe kind of um idealized me like the image of me in their head was better than the, the me that they got and i'm just a, reg a regular person i'm just a human so i'm not perfect i do make mistakes i have flaws um but ryan loves me in spite of those flaws so I, you light up talking about him that's very beautiful to see i want to know have you watched the act i want to know your thoughts on joey king's portrayal of you she's got paraplegia epilepsy heart murmurs and she's allergic to sugar everything i do i do for her my mom is my best friend all she wants to do is keep me safe actually i haven't watched the act um in prison, I didn't have access to like Hulu or any of the streaming channels like that. Um, and even with my first week of freedom, I haven't had a desire to look at it. I, I lived it, you know, um, I think that was for everyone else and um, not for the person that actually lived it. So I won't be watching it. So with that being said, I was going to ask, what did Hulu get wrong about your story? But you wouldn't even be able to answer that one. Correct, correct. All I can go off of is, you know, I know the, the content that I've put out. I know the documentaries and the interviews that I've done. Um, and that's why this one is so important because this one, um, you know, this one really dives deep into things that I haven't talked about before. And that's when I hear her calling my name. Gypsy, help me. Her daughter, Gypsy Blanchard, and her boyfriend are now jailed on first degree murder. I played a part in asking him to commit the murder. That is why I'm in prison. I've had six years to feel those emotions. And there's things that I've kept so private. The reason why I want to talk about it now is because I want to be free. So, you know, people might think that they have seen other documentaries, so they know everything, and that's just not the case. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still a person healing from trauma, um, and in my own time, I divulge more information when I'm ready to. You want kids? Yeah, in the yeah of course. Ryan and I um, have talked about starting a family and we just don't know when, you know, it'll it'll happen when it when it's meant to. 
So it sounds like motherhood is something that does appeal to you, despite what you've gone through. Right. I have actually a lot of a great motherly role models, like my stepmom, Christy. Um, I have lots of friends that I can pull, you know, great, great guidance from. So they've been they've been guiding lights for me. Goals and resolutions, Gypsy. Mm -hmm. what, what is it for you? Goals and resolutions. OK, um, I think goal is to um, really, really like put my feet into my advocacy work really start a foundation for it and 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 build on that um so you know i think i have a pretty big following right now so i think that's going to be good in helping me out in the area of of broadcasting my voice out there um resolutions i think just not to get ahead of myself take my time in this newfound freedom not to rush into everything because when i got out i felt like i have to do everything all at once uh, just to catch up so <laughs> you know just take my time and enjoy enjoy life and that final question for you, the biggest misconception about you, what is that? And uh, what do you want the world to know about Gypsy Rose? Um, I think the biggest misconception people have of me is um, that I'm still that that little, that little girl that got arrested, you know, that frightened, scared, abused child. Um, and I'm, I'm not anymore. I'm, I'm very different. I've matured over the last eight and a half, eight and a half years. Um, and I'm, I'm a fully grown woman now, and I'm just ready to start my life. Gypsy, thank you so much for your time. Please thank your team yeah. for us as well. I know you are very busy. The interviews are coming out, and we appreciate your transparency at this time. Of course, of course. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you again.